Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's hey! a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach. Turn up your mind. You considered using emergency powers to grant yourself authorities to build this wall without congressional approval. And second, yes, on I Mexico, have. you have. Yes, I have. And, and I can do it if I want. So you don't need congressional approval to build the no, wall? No, we can use them. Absolutely. We can call a national emergency because of the security of our country, absolutely. No, we can do it. I haven't done it. I may do it. I may do it. But we can call a national emergency and build it very quickly. And uh, it's another way of doing it. But if we can do it through a negotiated process, we're giving that a shot. So is that uh, a threat hanging over the Democrats? I never threaten anybody. But, but I am allowed to do that, yes. Second question. Called a national emergency. Oh, my God. Now, here's where we are. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy M Laces out. <laughs> oh, God, that Bears game was bad. It was very, very bad. Uh, I watched a lot of football. Tried to distract myself this weekend. Just watched and watched and uh, got very depressed. I will say you got a good quarterback over there in Dallas. I never saw, you know, such gymnastics in my life. I never saw anything like Because I was raised on Dan Marino, Miami Dolphins football, and Dan never even came out of the pocket. Now, this guy is doing, uh, you know, uh, somersaults. Just saying. Brett thinks it's going to be, uh, what, the New Orleans Saints versus the Patriots again. Too much offense from the Saints. Oh, my God. So that's depressing. <laughs> that's depressing. But now here's where we are today. All right. Over the weekend, the president went to Camp David. I used to go there, but they changed chefs and the food's not any good. Uh, but he went there and nothing happened. There was no progress made, although some, you know, the Republicans, are, oh, yeah, progress. The Democrats, he didn't give us a dollar amount, nothing. And then today the president said that tomorrow he's needing the networks and the cables to give him a prime time news conference from the Oval Office. He needs to address the American people. Now, color me suspicious, but I believe that the president is going to say that some haggard Honduran housewives at the border that have been there for months now, which cost him the House of Representatives, you know, the top campaign voting issue in 2018 was health care and 40 people had to pack their bags on capitol hill from the republican party and go home because we decided to change the makeup of congress to have a congress that would a do some oversight on this madman this narcissist b start talking about health care c do some sort of a green energy infrastructure package and get us on the path to the 21st freaking century. So, and all he wanted to talk about was Honduran housewives and, and, and little toddlers that he wanted to put in cages as a deterrent to others in Central America not to come here. It didn't work. And it cost him the Congress. Now, he's betting the Senate in 2020 and his own presidency on this ridiculous waste of money, ridiculous, stupid wall. And he has walled himself in so hard that he has to now produce a wall or he's gonna lose the cult following. He's gonna lose cult 45. He's gonna lose uh, 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 the, 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 the white supremacists. And he knows he's facing impeachment because the House has gone to the Democrats and they are going to hold him accountable for everything under the sun that he has done from enriching himself using the presidency to obstructing justice to uh, money laundering uh, to lying to the American people. You know, Richard Nixon was impeached for lying to the American people. Just saying. 
And now the president has created a government shutdown that is affecting real people, our real security. Terrorists do not come from the southern border. Terrorists come by air. Everybody knows that, including the Department of Homeland Security. And Kristen Nielsen decided last week in the Rose Garden to lie to you about it. We'll go through everything that happened. But here's the thing. Tomorrow, the networks didn't even know if they wanted to give him primetime coverage because this man never makes news. He just bloviates and insults people and threatens everybody within an inch of their lives. And they didn't want to, you know, uh, interrupt their entertainment programming for that. He has sort of kind of reassured them that he's going to make news tomorrow. And if that's the case, this man is probably going to declare some national emergency based on some BS. Here's why it's BS. If there was a national emergency having to do with haggard Honduran housewives at the border, we would have had a national emergency declared months, maybe even a a year ago. Because nothing has changed. If he does this, he's trying to circumvent Congress so that he can declare a national emergency and appropriate funds, appropriate money to the stupid, stupid border wall. Now, they have thrown everything at this that you could possibly imagine, everything. They kept asking over the weekend. They were asking Sarah Sanders, is he serious about this? How serious is he about calling a national emergency? We can call a national emergency because of the security of our country. Absolutely. No, we can do it. I haven't done it. I may do it. I may do it. But we can call a national emergency and build it very quickly. How serious is he about that? Has the White House drafted an emergency order, a, a resolution that he could that he could announce tomorrow? Uh, we're declaring a national emergency. We're going to build the wall. Has he set a deadline for when he's going to end talks and simply say, "I'm going to go off on my own and do it"? And is he really prepared? It's a lot of questions. Well, three. So is he really prepared? It's all the same question, which is how serious is he? Is he really prepared to go off on his own and use money that was authorized for uh, military construction and build a wall instead? The president is prepared to do what it takes to protect our borders, to protect the people of this country. He knows that the number one job he has as president and commander in chief is to protect its citizens. And if he doesn't take that seriously, whether it's at our southern border or whether it's from uh, terrorists coming from whatever way they come or any other place does that he really think he has- to do harm to Americans, then he is not going to be uh, the president that he knows himself to be. And, and does he really, he just quickly, does he really think years. that that he has the authority to build the wall with funds that were appropriated for the military construction without congressional approval? As we've said for the last several weeks, we're looking and exploring every option available that the president has. Um, whatever and is that a viable he, option? Whatever action he takes will certainly be lawful, and we're looking at every option we can. <laughs> this is something the president takes incredibly seriously this is all bull crap the president said mexico was going to pay for the stupid wall let's just not forget and the president failed because you know he's the best negotiator he knows the best people he's got the best words he he everything is the best and he's the best negotiator and nobody knows more about anything than he does he knows more about terrorism than the generals he knows more about drones than the technology people he knows more about border security than uh, you know anybody i i this, This is such a sick presidency that it really needs to end. It really, really needs to end. Uh, Except we're about to go through a major upheaval in in, in Congress, in the courts. I mean, this is going to be something tomorrow if he declares a national emergency. And he was asked again over the weekend if he was going to do this as he was leaving for Camp David. We have to build the wall or we have to build the barrier. Uh, The barrier... Or the wall could be of steel instead of concrete, if that helps people. Oh, my God. It may be better. I may declare a national emergency dependent on what's going to happen over the next few days. Now, let me remind you that he had Congress. He had a Republican House. He had a Republican Senate. He still has a Republican Senate. 
and he was the president of the United States, and he failed to get them to give him the money for the stinking wall. The Democrats had offered him the whole, tw it's not 5.6, it's $25 billion. And the Democrats offered him $25 billion if he would do comprehensive immigration reform, and he would not do it. He would not do it. And at the very last minute, on their way out the door, with their bags packed, headed home for good, never to darken the doorways of Congress again, the Republican House passed an appropriations bill for 5.6, and it did not pass the Senate. Instead, the Senate voted on six funding bills to open the government and one separate funding bill for DHS to extend the negotiation period on the stupid wall money until February 8th. The House is willing to vote on that. The House voted on that day one. And now Mitch McConnell says he won't vote for his own stinking package. This is a very sick situation we find ourselves in. And now the president is going to manufacture some sort of crisis. Now, when Mick Mulvaney was asked, you had two years, why didn't you do it? He tried to say we couldn't, do oh, well, we really don't have the Senate, we needed 60 votes. But you remember that the Democrats voted for all the money, for all the money back in March. At the end of the day, though, shouldn't your party have resolved this months ago when you had full control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency? I mean, I, I know you're a little later into this process, but are you looking at this going, you, you waited till the last minute for this? Now, you and I know, you know the answer to that question before you ask it, because we've had this discussion before. Everyone says we have full control of the House and the Senate. You know mm -hmm. that any appropriation bill has to have 60 votes in the Senate, which means you have to have Democrat support. She didn't even the attempt House... to put the pressure on the Senate until the last day with passing that $5.6 billion bill. The really? point is the House didn't even try to send something to the Senate. Right. Chuck, that's not Sooner true. We've been that. talking, we've been talking about this number with the House and the Senate for I many, that. many months. But they didn't actually pass it until the last minute. Really? That was just such a BS move. The Senate passed a package of funding that would open up agriculture, justice, all the T, you know, uh, uh, TSA, uh, custom, I, all this stuff, all of it. And now Mitch McConnell, well, I'm not going to bring up our own package now that the House has passed it. These people are front running phonies and this president is dangerous. And tomorrow night, because he wants prime time, so I'm guessing it's tomorrow night, somewhere between, what, 8 and 10, he's going on TV. And I don't know what kind of BS he's going to sling about terrorism at the border and, uh, you know. Uh, meanwhile, i got to tell you that TSA is calling in sick. The Pilots Association, the largest pilot union in the world, is begging him to put an end to the government shutdown, saying that 61,000 pilots from 35 U.S. and Canadian airlines signed on to a letter saying you are threatening the safety, security, and efficiency of our national airspace. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.